Hey, what's up guys? My name is Mnudge, and today I'm going to be talking about add output, which is an output in Hammer that allows you to do one of two things, either add an output to another entity or change the value of a property of another entity. I'll be discussing the first one first and the latter one second. Now, add output is a very, very underused, very powerful little output, and it's sad that it's very underused because it's, it is a bit complicated, so I strongly advise you to know how to use the input-output system before watching this video, but it makes things so much, so much easier in many situations, and allows you to do some really, really cool things. Now, as usual, this map will be in the down link in the description down below, as long as a written tutorial for some information that I might not be able to touch on in this video tutorial. And I'll first be showing you a demonstration of how things work, why they work, and why you'd want to use in the first place. Now, again, add output adds an output to another entity. So, let's start off by going to these oddly colored blocks. The yellow one, the gray one, and the brown one. Let's just hit it with this little staff over here. It plays a moo sound. Simple as that. It keeps doing that, that's all it does. Until you hit this yellow block, which only makes it happen once. It only makes this thing have a slamper saying thanks and the cow playing. And right after that, back to the cow playing again. That's it. So, again, you can have it so that one entity adds an output to another entity. You can change the fire time. So it can be fire once, fire infinite times, and fire, you know, custom amount. So I set it to fire once, and I added it to over here. So I hit this thing, and now it plays both of them. Now this one over here is same concept, except it adds it to itself. I don't know why you need to use this, but you can use this. So you hit it first time, nothing happens, but actually something does happen, you don't see it happening. It adds an output to itself to play a sound. Hit it again, that's the sound. Simple as that. Pretty cool. I'll show you all this in Hammer itself. This is a little doorway, which is a one-way doorway, which means it does a thing when you walk into it one way. See, nothing happened then, but... Sound plays. Pretty cool. Uh, I can't exactly explain that to you in game itself. I'll have to show you that in Hammer, how I did that. This over here is a concept, uh, something that I made in my MGE map that I wanted to make without plugins. It's a whole little project. It didn't end up working out, but I got this little cool idea. Now, this thing, using add output, you can store an output in a trigger that is disabled that can be enabled by the player later on in the game. I'll show you what I mean. I'm on this little platform over here. There's a trigger here, but it is disabled. The screen button over here enables and disables it. Um, nothing happened because it's a blank trigger. These buttons add an output to it. The small one has added an output to the trigger that is disabled. It enables it, and now I'm small. That's what it does. That's what it did. It made me small. This uh, middle one over there made me normal. This big one makes me big. Uh, simple as that, again. It just changed my, my model size. But the cool thing over here is that it stores in the trigger that is only enabled once I enable it. And of course, since it's fire once only, it goes away once I touch it, once I actually use it. And you can use this in your map to have an event only triggered once a person presses the button, but that event changes based on a different button the guy presses. It makes some very easy, complex things. It's, it sounds like a, a paradox. It's not. Let's change my size back to normal. An oxymoron, that's what I was looking for. Anyway, also, the thing that I mentioned beforehand about firing custom amount of times. You can change it so that it fires 26, 54, a specific number of times. And of course, control this stuff with logic, ro uh, logic relays and math counters and other stuff. But it's much, much simpler over here. What I have over here is a button, which is blank. But I had a logic auto add an output to it to play a sound five times only. I set the fire to five times. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See? Only five times did a sound play. No, nothing to happen ever again, unless you have like a button which adds an output five times. But you can set a custom amount of times for something to fire. Usually it's just fire once or fire infinitely. You don't have the control of firing a certain amount of times. Of course, you can control that with a log or logic relay, you know, storing the output in a logic relay, having a math calculator track how many times, and then disable or lock that logic relay. But of course, that's like, that's complicated for no reason. That's using more entities for no reason. You can lower your entity count by using add output, and there's no reason not to, except for the fact that you don't know how to. Now, let's just discuss all this in Hammer, so you can actually get an idea how to use this, instead of just saying how cool it is, I'm the best. Alright, welcome to Hammer. Now, as usual, I have a little thing over here, which is a Funk Respawn Room brush, so that I can change classes easily. That's not really important to anything over here. I just like putting that in my test maps. I have Light Environment, which, you know, adds a little lighting, because I'm lazy with lighting, and done and done. Let's discuss the first thing over here. Just a regular button, right? It doesn't move. And it has undamaged play sound one. Sound one is this guy right. Nope, that, that's not two. Sound one is this guy right over here, which plays cow two dot wave. 
All right, nothing much, but this yellow button over here has a weird looking output. This thing is a weird kind of odd syntax. The format is output name, which, you know, in this case is actually on damaged. Then the target name, who you want to target, which is sound two. Input name, you know, with colon, and then colon parameter, colon delay, and then colon the maximum of times to fire. So you just gotta memorize how that works over there. So I did on damaged, sound two, colon play sound, colon zero parameters, colon zero delay, and fire once. That's within one. I can change it once like 20, you know, fire 20 times. And that's basically all I did. That's the same exact, you know, usual order of how things work. So it shouldn't be too difficult to memorize. You just have to memorize that the on whatever has a space, not a colon, you know, at, right before the target. So that adds an output over there. And this one over here does the same thing, but to itself. So as the self affected. Add output on damage sound three colon play sound colon zero colon zero colon one. So it adds you know this thing over here sound three to itself. Simple as that. Now let's go on this little guy over here, which is what I was talking about that he was an MGE, which again failed. So this little trigger over here has nothing, nothing at all, but it does have a few inputs. This thing over here um, enables and disables it, and also unlocks these buttons for different reasons. That's you can just ignore the unlock and the lock thing over here. That's just so you don't mess with things. Things get weird. But over here, what these things do, again, is they all have an undamaged, and they this thing's called size trigger. They affect it. They add an output to it. They add on start touch activator, which is the player. Set model scale, which is actually a cool little thing you can do. 0.5, but that's the parameter that you have to use with set model scale. And zero delay, and fire once. So these things all add into it a certain you know, output, a certain on-start touch thing. And nothing happens because this thing is set to start disabled. And, it's, you know, after, it's always disabled. And only when you hit the button is it enabled, which you can actually use the on-start touch property. So again, it has nothing. These buttons affect it. Now, this little door over here that I wanted to explain, it's it's a bit weird. Uh, but, you know, it used add output. So when you, if you go through this way, it will enable and disable this brush, so you, you can't ever touch this brush to affect it. It's as simple as that, nothing much. And uh, when you touch this brush, when it's actually enabled, meaning you go through the opposite way most of the time, that's usually how it works, it will add an output to this doorway trigger over here, called doorway one, to a trigger one. And that output, what does it do? On start touch, it plays this thing called sound doorway, which is that ambient generic right there. Play sound, zero delay, zero parameters, and fire once. So therefore, when you go in this way, it will add an output to the second little um, brush-based entity, and you go through this way, it will disable it, so it can't add anything. Simple as that. Now, this thing over here uses a logic auto. Again, this is all pretty, pretty simple, and once you know the exact context, the format, output name, a space, the target name, colon, input name, colon, parameter, colon, delay, colon, max times to fire. This logic auto over here affects this thing called button 5, you know, very original, I know. On map spawn, it adds an output to it that once it's damaged, play sound 4 with a delay of 0, parameter of 0, but 5 times. Maximum times to fire is 5. This guy over here, I changed to 5, not 1, not negative 1, 5. So now, this guy, you know, which has normally no outputs, plays this thing 5 times when you hit it, and that's it. Done. Of course, you can have a button or other, like a logic relay to do this kind of thing. But I use the logic auto because logic autos are the best. And that's really all I can show you for at output. You really have to experiment with yourself, see what kind of creative, cool things you can use and how you'd use it and create your own little things. All right, welcome back to the second part of the tutorial, which is changing the value of a property of an entity. So, three things over here. Let's go to the first one. I've actually had this in a map of mine. This is a doorway with a trigger and the doorway with a TF class filter attached to it and that basically makes it the set if I walk through nothing happens the trigger doesn't get a, you know on start touch never happens and I have on start touch a set that you know if it, of course matches the filter play a sound and these buttons over here I can use these to change I can use the buttons to change the filter to change what it affects so currently it's on soldier it's on engineer I believe let's change it to down man again it's not on me nothing will happen and just soldier and walk through, and you know, you hear the sound. You know that uh, you can change it back to engineer, Just change to engineer, walk through the doorway, and 
You heard the sound. Pyro. Nothing happens at all. Now the important thing to note about this kind of stuff is that the change doesn't always happen right then and there. With filters you're lucky, they do. But with things like the skybox or even rotating brushes, like I'm going to show you right now, they don't get affected. The output doesn't change until a certain something happens. In this case, it's either this thing collides with me or it resets. I'll show you. This little door, press the button, starts moving. It's a bit of a sound that happens forever. And I have these two buttons over here to change the speed of this little rotating funk door rotating thing. Uh, this one makes it faster, that one makes it slower. But nothing's happening. I made it faster, nothing happened. But if it collides into me, there. <laughs> it's pretty fast. Speed of 500. Make it slow again. Nothing happens whatsoever because in the event never happened. Let's hit it and now it goes slowly again. So you can see that certain things don't get affected exactly when. So you might not be able to change every single output, but don't let that stop you from trying. If you found something really cool, just let me know. But, you know, it's not always a solve all end all. Some things can be a problem that, you know, some things how it happen on map start, so map change, on round start. So you just practice. Practice and let me know. Now, the third thing here is this little green button. And the cool thing is that you, you are an entity. The player himself is an entity. You can get affected with exclamation mark activator. That's what you are. You're the activator. What activates the thing. There's a button over here. What I've done is I've made this button using the add output to set my origin. My origin is, you know, where I am in the map. So if I shoot it right now, I get teleported right over here. I didn't have a teleport brush over there. I just shot the button. It could be from anywhere in this entire room. Shoot that. Boom, I get teleported. Now, why would you use this over, you know, the teleport brush? Of course, for this very reason, that you can shoot it from anywhere. As long as you are the activator, you get teleported. You, you get changed. And this isn't the only add output. There's a lot of other ones as well. There's um, setting your health to a custom amount. You know, instead of using a trigger hurt with a negative value, you can set a person's health to 80. You can have like an auto regen where everyone's in 80 health always. and Or maybe everyone's on 102 health always. You can have like a spy ambassador headshot arena place. There's a lot of values you can change. There's gravity also. You can change the render mode. The model scale size I just showed you beforehand is actually not an add output. It's a thing itself. It's set model size. There's a couple of them also, which again, aren't outputs. But this one is, and it's extremely useful, and I'll show you that in Hammer. Here we go. Alright, welcome to the Hammer view. Now, as usual, I have this little thing over here, the Funk Respawn Room Brush, that can change classes easily without dying. Same as last map, I use the same little template. I just put things in here. Let's discuss the first thing that I discussed. So these are all little buttons, you know, with um, this little portrait HUD thing, All right? And what I have for this one over here, uh, I named them all class selector so that I can do the press in, press out stuff. Ignore this stuff. What you really need to know is this. On damaged, it affects this thing over here called filter various class, and it adds an output to TF class one. So the important thing to know about this stuff is that you really, really, really have to know the name of what it's actually called. Over here it says class and it says spy with an actual drop down list. You have to know what, what the non smart edit name for it is. It's actually called TF class and it has a value from 1 to 9. Zero means everything can go through. Putting the smart edit on, you see class. So if you want to change the value of one of the properties, you always have to know. It's in the code negated, this one's called target name, it's called TF class. You have to actually have to use those names, which are always to be one word, by the way. All right, so let's just close that. And you see this little thing has under touch, play this class beep sound, right? And it's attached to filter various class. This guy over here changes it to TF class nine. You just add output and the parameter is the, you know, what you want it to change it to, what you want it to change and what you want to change it to. Simple as that. All right, now let's go to this little super thing over here that I was talking about before. Nothing interesting here. It's a funk door rotating. It rotates. I set um, the speed to 50 by default and the distance to 36,000, which it goes quite a bit. This thing just toggles it on and off. Simple as that. This makes it higher. See? Same thing as last time. This is called rotator. It adds an output. It changes the speed to 500. This time, you know, it's the speed, but in the smart edit way also. But, you know, it doesn't matter. Speed 500 over here, change it to speed 50. But again, it doesn't get changed until it collides or it comes to complete stop, it completes its rotation. So you have to know that certain things will not change automatically. Now, for a button, which of course there's a lot 
and I mean a lot of uses for this kind of thing. But I can't explain all of them in this video tutorial. I'll have to put a few of them in the written one, which um, you'll have a link to in the description down below, as long as a link to these uh, maps, like I said before. On pressed, the activator, which is you. You are the activator. You're the person who pressed this button. Add an output to you, and I change the origin to 2, 16.7, negative 14.2 and negative 74.8 i have went into tf2 itself i used spec underscore pose or position which you know put the position in the console and i copied that and put that over there that's how i got this thing you have to have the exact coordinates there's no other entity that you can teleport to but of course it saves on entity space if you're super paranoid about entity space there's a thing you do and a little thing which might be ringing into um, a problem if this isn't working for you is you have to use on pressed I, before, <laughs> used undamaged, because I want, you know, when I got shot for it to work. But that didn't work, because there is no activator for undamaged. When it gets damaged, itself is, like, the activator, or I don't even think that's true. It's just, the, the, it's, it doesn't do anything, because you're not the activator. You didn't damage it. It got damaged, but you're the one who pressed it, apparently. Why does it work? It's weird. I don't know why. But what you do is you tick damage activate, so that damage will make it be pressed, of course. I also don't move, so it got pressed, but it doesn't move or anything. Simple as that. Now, a couple of other things you can actually change this to. I'm just going to type them here. I'm not going to actually explain it what they do necessarily. Um, you have something called target name, and then you can insert like um, your name. So you can change the player's name the, on the map side to something else, and then you can affect a different thing. While saying like only people with the name of this can pass through here, and you've just effectively changed the user's name to that, and any users who've you had their name changed, can go through that thing. That's how you can single out players, which is extremely useful, but um, I'm not going to explain it completely in this tutorial. Other things also, for example, are health, where you can enter in a specific health number. Usually, you know, it's used to trigger um, hurt with a negative value to add health, but over here, you're not adding health. You're just setting the guy's health exactly, so you can set it to a very, very specific amount. Again, these are all things can be used with buttons, they can be used with triggers also, and you can do use on start touch. I'm just showing you that you can use the buttons, and that's why it's so cool. You can also change the person's gravity to different numbers. Uh, you can change the 0.5, uh, whatever, 2, doesn't matter. You can actually use negative values to make him fly up, similar to, again, how the trigger gravity works. But again, this is all using buttons. This is why it's so amazing, so cool, and just so wonderful. There's other things you can do as well. But again, a down link to this map will be shown in the description down below. I hope you've learned something here. If not, that sucks. You're a terrible listener. But again, for more information, check out the link in the description down below for the written tutorial.